Okay, we're good. Are we on? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hi. How y'all doing? You didn't tell me Hi. you were streaming this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Was that <laughs> What next? We're going to have a podcast? This is ridiculous. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I look awful. Oh. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about after the stream. <laughs> You look awful. <laughs> well, okay. Luckily, the podcast won't see that, so that's fine. <laughs> and uh, today we're raising money for KFC, right, Zach? Oh my gosh! Um, uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Mr. Sullivan. Um, wow. <laughs> so, uh, I guess the meeting will come to order. Yeah. Are we doing this now? Okay. We do. So, it. um. Howdy, friendos. Welcome to the first ever meeting of the Secret Adventure Society. Uh, I am Wacky Zach, and they're letting me DM for some reason. Um, a couple of smallish notes before we get started. Just in case you didn't know, this is a whole new adventure that has nothing to do with the one shot we did for Clerics for Medics. Uh, each stream is going to be an episode of a chronological storyline. Uh, but if you miss an episode or can't make it to the live streams, uh, you can find all of them on the SAS YouTube page. Uh, which you can find by hitting exclamation point S-A-S-Y-T, sassy T, uh, in chat. If you are more of a podcast person, each live stream will be split into two parts and released weekly as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. We're still waiting on our RSS feed to be available on iTunes, which is kind of the big one, but it's available on Spotify and Stitcher right now. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of days, by by this Monday, that'll be available. So keep that in mind. Um, on that note, we have a whole bunch of commands that Locke has made uh, for chat to give you random info about the stream and the campaign. So you can see them scrolling here. What? Here. No. Are they scrolling right now? They're, they're, they're not scrolling yeah, right now? Yeah, they're to your, your they're upper to left. Your left. Upper they're left. above me. Yeah, over, they're they're like, right yonder. <laughs> yeah. That's not important. But either way, you can see them <laughs> there. <laughs> they, um, they will disappear here in a little bit um just for a little while and then they'll come back um yeah they'll, but, they'll have to go to the bathroom <laughs> but we also have uh hang on i have what is happening okay no it's fine i'm um, sorry we also have uh like an exclamation point um roll command um yeah so you can somebody do, do that exclamation point roll d20 and uh it will let you roll uh a d20 um, just if you want to make a, just if you want to make a check it's on like yourself. The, here, let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like that. <laughs> um, there's also a, a D6, a D4, a D8, a D10, oh, a not D100, really? and a D12. Yes. Um, which, I mean, be, really the, the 20 is the most important, but it's just kind of right. for fun. If you guys are wondering what you might roll when we make a roll, uh, you know, just kind of fun little Yeah, game. just to see what would happen. Yeah. Um, so, also on that note, uh, I know you haven't met the characters yet, but once you do, and you want to see a specific character's stats, enter the character's name as a command, and that'll take you to a link that'll pull that up. Um, also, everyone here besides me is a streamer, so they got their own channel and their own rad content, so follow them all. Uh, hit exclamation point chat to link to their channels. It's cast. But did no. I say chat? Yeah. It's cast. I did yeah, it, and you know cast what? Cast makes more sense. I did it, and you know what? It didn't happen. Gosh darn it. We're not important anyway. Uh, Gosh darn it, Locke. Uh, hang on. Our names you, are under us, though, if you just type that in. You can find me at Retreating Goon. That's <laughs> that's where I claim home now. I'm also, uh, uh, I, I'm also Retreating Goon. <laughs> let's let me i'm squidward no, I'm, I'm squidward i'm squidward why is it not why why <laughs> i knew something was gonna go wrong i have that command like six times though so i think sas cast works as well did that okay. one work mm -hmm. did We're that done tag you it all? deleted it oh it did oh uh, please no, sir. please mix it up killed like, all let's of us work. <laughs> let's Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see their stats no matter what. But like, you know, yeah. if a plate breaks in a restaurant on opening night, that's actually a sign of good luck. So this is good. This that's is fine. True. This is true. Let's um, see if I can delete myself from the list and see if it does it. Oh look, everybody's there. Perfect. Yay! <laughs> so. so while Locke while Locke is panicking about the stuff that the tech stuff that went wrong, I would like to say thanks to Locke for this bonkers awesome overlay. 
which yeah, uh, yes, yeah, well, and Zach, yeah, well, and Zach has both done a lot of work on this. So, well, you know, I actually played. Lock did all the visual stuff. Zach is going to take us on the adventure. <laughs> it's a lot of work behind this. Well, you both did. You both did fantastic. That's one you tiny did little. Fantastic! Thing. Look at that mustache, yeah, man. Like, look at like. This oh, I mean, uh, yeah, great work, you two. <laughs> I, I, I will say Eric's makeup is on par with Peter Jackson's makeup. And I'm not saying, like, that's not an exaggeration. Literally looks lifted out of the movies I was watching this week. Yeah. I didn't know <laughs> Peter Jackson wore makeup. <laughs> <laughs> also, thanks to Aurelia Ref for the freaking fantastic character art, which you guys are going to see here in a little bit. Um, it, they have made me cry 12 separate times over the past two weeks uh, so as good. we got sketches in I mean, and full color sketches. So give her your money. Well, also some of you guys may have seen it um, possibly like sneak peeks of characters on Twitter and stuff as we've been getting yeah. our art in. We've been really excited. No, Harathmar, you're totally, I'm not talking about you. What? what? I, don't, I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, 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 Like. Like a lot of us have shared it, not just you. You're totally fine. I just didn't know if you wanted to share it, which was why I made the spoiler command or comment. Oh, I can't talk to that. Oh, I'm terrible with secrets. It's fine. That's fine, man. That's why I haven't told That's you. That's why I'm in the society. I'm here to learn about secrets. Right. right. <laughs> oh, great. Great. We're letting him in. He's terrible with secrets. There's only one way to get better at it. It's just to get more it's secrets. Just to try. Exactly. That's just true. to try and fail at keeping secrets. Um, so yeah, that's that's Aurelia Raff. Give her your money. You can find her at uh, Aurelia underscore draw on Twitter and Aurelia dot draw on Instagram. Um, for a link to her stuff, I hit exclamation it. point art in chat, just nope. like Lot did right Character under. Character art. Character art. Character yeah. art. Okay, uh, that works better. Uh, one last thing, and then I'll shut up and we'll start playing uh, the, the 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 Dungeons and Dragons without spoiling anything. <laughs> now what we're playing? Um, uh, yeah, uh, without spoiling anything that you're about to learn here in a minute we have a few pretty complicated characters rolled up uh and so we are inevitably going to screw up the rules just a little bit from time to time and that's just part of the game as far as i'm concerned but we're not gonna freak out about it when we do uh as far as the storyline is concerned uh if we find out we've been doing something wrong and this is for the entire campaign if we find out we've been doing something wrong we're just gonna correct course and avoid retconning too terribly much whenever possible and like i said as far as i'm concerned that's just part of the experience of having a D, &D campaign the monk that i've been playing for a year now is a quarter caster and that combined with key is just really kind of complicated so like i've like i said i've been playing that character for a year and we're still screwing up and learning so that's just part of it um if you like what you see here tonight maybe just maybe you know tell your friends about it you yeah, know have, actually, them, have them come our way we like friends yeah yeah that is like Number one, guys, if you can tweet out the stream, if you can post about it anywhere, let people know, even if you can talk about the podcast or whatever, um, you know, that's just, that's a, that's a biggie. That's a big thing we would love for you guys to do if, if you want to support us. It's a big one. All right. That's all I got. Y'all got anything else? Any other notes before we get started? Nervous. That was good time so with the so nervous. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's play D&D. &D. I feel like we should have like an intro. Well, should we, we, should like we sing a, a song? Like a let's get ready to roll. Well, Zach, I don't know if you need an intro music, but I think we just made it. There it is. We have it. It's clipped now, so. <laughs> Some people call it an immersive audio experience. <laughs> it's, it's, it was binaural, I'm sure. Very ASMR. Eat your heart out, stomp. <laughs> oh, guys, I've already, I've already, I've been so nervous that I'm almost done with my first drink. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Same. You're not going to brown bag it? Lock, come on, man. <laughs> no, what? Okay. Yeah, like like you're at the beach outside of 7-Eleven. Right, exactly. Okay. Or inside. Wait, where the hell? Oh, Eric is poor. Uh, I'm sorry, Dorf is pouring his beverage. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah let's let us let us in there. Let us see what before. He's up yeah, to. before we get started, let's all let's all take a shot from Dorf's pub. Dorf's tavern, yeah. Dorf's tavern. <laughs> I'll drink Cheers, that. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Oh, look at this, that. This is, this is an 18 plus stream. Just letting right. you guys know. Say whatever the fuck you want to. I don't care. Um, 
No, 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 it's in the mustache. Oh What's <laughs> Just like it should be. Fantabulous. <laughs> All right. So we open on the sea. Waves splash against the hull of a ship. Old rotting wood creaks and groans under the pressure of the ship's own weight bouncing up and down on the water. The shit stains of a hundred seagulls have painted the railings of a small three-person sloop completely white. Jindy, following a symphony of bad luck, you have found yourself aboard the sea keg, named uh, most likely jokingly and spitefully by the first sailors unfortunate enough to have to cram aboard it. But joke or not, it's now the name that's painted on the side uh, of the bow. It's about 30 paces from bow to stern, and you've been aboard as interim captain uh, for about a day and a half. Right now, you are standing below deck, watching as water from a two-inch hole in the hull pours in and puddles in the floor. Uh, a crew member you had instructed to fix it an hour before, a drow female named Kip, uh, is slouched over on a stool asleep with an empty flag and a veil. Uh, before we get into it, um, what would someone who is standing on this ship in the hull see when they see you, and what would you like to do? They are going... Sorry. It's good. Uh, they're going to see a, um, a blue, um, slender, uh, water genasi. Um, blue hair, blue skin, aquatic type of ears, um... In a pirate getup. Okay. Uh, and then Jindy is going to be walking over to Kip and uh, kind of kicking, kicking the boot and being like, "Get to work, patch what? up the hole." Oh, well, well, sorry, Captain. Sorry about that. Um, hey, should I should I get the cannons ready or or what? I can't really remember. Uh, can't really remember if I got the uh, the cannons ready. <laughs> Useless, useless. I am going to uh, look around and see if there are some nails and boards so that I can patch that up. Okay, uh, make, um, well, uh, I'm not going to make you make a check because you, it's your ship. You would know where stuff is. So uh, easily enough, you can find some board and nails. But I will ask you to make a, we'll call it a strength check to... to First roll of up. the entire campaign. Yep, no yep, pressure. yep, yep, yep. And I will say at this point, uh, Kip is asleep in the water on her back. Just and it's about like up to her, like up above her ears. So she's definitely gonna have swimmers here. But she's not like drowning or anything. She's not face down. A uh, straight strength roll is gonna be a seven. Okay. Um you 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 bend some nails, you break some wood. But eventually you get the water to stop. That wasn't a very high DC, but uh, eventually you're able to get the water to kind of stop flowing. Um, would you? Are you just going to leave Kip lying there? Or? We'll pull Kip out of the water, at least enough to where Kip's still wet, but breathing. Okay, so we'll say that like you set her back up on the stool and she's <laughs> now the, yeah. like she's still got the flag in a veil, like death grip clenched in her hand. But um, yeah, she's she's no longer in the water. So, um, at this point, do you make your way back above deck, or is there anything, like, uh, below below decks you'd still like to do? Um, I'll probably look around to see if there's anybody around to see if we can start getting some buckets and getting the water out and see if we can start bucketing. Okay, you do know that it is only you and two other crewmen uh, aboard this ship. So, um, so then I'm going to go start looking for the other person. Okay. Um, so, as you make your way back up uh, to the deck, you can see... Uh, the Moonshay Isles uh, on the horizon, particularly the port town of Evercrest uh, coming into view. Behind the wheel is the other crew member who came with you on this uh, journey for supplies. Hart is a half-work male, uh, and he sort of, he sees you coming up the stairs. Kip, crawl into the ale, ale stores, I take it. Yeah, unfortunately, and we had a whole, I have it, I have it all taken care of, but we do need to start uh, getting the water out of the bottom or we're going to go down. Yeah, yeah, I can take care of that. Um, hey, hey, Captain, I've been meaning to ask you something. Um, I know Evercrest is really the only place we can get supplies right now, but it's, um, it's pretty clean. What are we going to do if people start 
asking questions. A quick glance, and it's pretty clear what our top is. Let's get what we need. I mean, if you need, if you if you have if you have to do what you have to do, let's just go ahead. Just just get whatever you need. Um, just get it back to the ship. What all all means necessary. I can do that, Captain. And then at that point, uh, Hart goes down and starts starts bucketing Sea of Thieves style. <laughs> but you guys aren't in any immediate danger. There's probably only like like three inches uh, in spots because like there's probably recessed wood and stuff like that. So. Uh, like I said, you're watching as the port town of Evercrest, uh, the capital of the Moonshay Isles, comes into view. You're standing behind the wheel with the wind in your hair and probably wondering what the hell you're going to do next. Um, Evercrest, like most of the Moonshay Isles, is very, very rich in druidic history. Uh, the most prominent and well-known of which is certainly the existence of what are known as life wells. Uh, the origin of these wells is a source of heated debate. Uh, but hardly anyone who finds themselves standing next to them can deny the oneness with nature they feel in its presence. Uh, many of them, uh, let's see. Uh, many of them, uh, like many people believe that they were placed there by the Earth Mother herself. People travel from far and wide to come see them. And many of them have evolved into places of like worship and deep meditation. Uh, perhaps the group of people for whom the life wells mean the most are the Well Keepers, a society of druids who practice meditation and connection with these life wells. Uh, so, Kess, you are right now on official Wellkeeper business. Uh, you're walking along a beach with a human druid named Ethis, who you've known uh, since your time with the Well Keepers began. Before we get into it, what might someone who is walking along the beach see when they look at you? Um... <clears throat> Okay, so a uh, changeling, uh, tall, slender, uh, long white hair with a bunch of braids. Um, my eyes are white and colorless with like just dark, uh, basically just darkness around them. Um, I am a changeling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I um, am gonna be like, I, I want to be in my uh, current changeling form. Um, I'm not, you know, pretending. Just in your natural form? Yeah, in my natural form. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm wearing uh, silks, uh, black silks. Um, I got some genie pants on. Uh, so some, <laughs> some flowy pants. Uh, <laughs> like, I have a um, raven feather in one of my braids in my hair. Uh, I'm wearing a necklace that um, is possibly dirt or maybe the ashes of someone you don't know. Uh, and <laughs> and um, I'm wearing some uh, earrings that are bird skulls. Uh, Wait, your your necklace is made of ash or like you've got like a, sorry, like a container? Sorry, there's a vial. It's like okay. a vial of ash in the okay. necklace. Sorry, I'm nervous. Oh, it's totally fine. You're doing good. <laughs> Okay, is there anything that you'd like to be doing? Mm, I mean, you're, you're, you're walking along the beach with uh, Ethis, and Ethis, he's been kind of, like, he's kind of a, a fidgety, a fidgety guy. And um, he's just kind of, he's, he's walking with you, and you guys are like, you're kind of having trouble keeping up with him because naturally he just walks very, very fast. And he goes, so Cass, you've never actually told me how you came to be all the way here from the north. I mean, I've lived here always. I figure most people live where they've lived always. I reckon it's it says something about somebody's character and heart and bravery and goal and all what have you to chase something different from what they've always known. Must be pretty brave to come all the way here by yourself. You know what I'm saying? My gosh, you talk fast. Please, please. Can you can you be just a little quieter, maybe, and just like quieter. Uh, quieter. I can be quieter. I'm 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 sorry. I don't okay, I, I don't so mean to talk fast. I just, it's just I. Ugh. I've got so many words I want to get out, you know, but yeah, I've, I've got I've got so much to got so many stories to tell, so many words, and you, uh, I re really enjoy your company, so you know, I don't I don't want to leave anything on the table, you know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, yes, I'm I'm from the north. Uh, it's I've traveled very far. Uh, it's I don't I don't uh, do I have to get into all this right now? Oh no, we don't have to. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. We don't have to do this right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, it's it's what a, what a, what's our next business like? What okay, so um, about this time you approach the life well, which 
basically looks like a glorified mud puddle. Uh, it's like a it's a circle, like an oval of water on the ground, but it looks really, really shallow, like shallow, only a couple inches uh, deep. But it is gorgeous. It's mostly pink and shimmering with like uh, silver blue when the wind blows just right. Think of the water in Shadowlands, um, and wow, like the Shadowlands Alpha. Think of that. Okay. Um, and so, like as you guys see that, it's probably about ten yards in the distance, and. Kip, like, he's silent for a minute because he, he feels like you just kind of admonished him. Not really admonished him, but you, you can tell he's, like, he's got more that he wants to say, and but he's, he's trying to keep his mouth shut, but he fails. Uh, then he says, What do you say when you meditate with the life wells? People come from all over to see the life wells, expecting them to solve all their problems. It's best not to think of it as some grand revelation, you, you know, you'll get from it if you ask me. More like you're letting the life well know you're really there. It really slows the world down, if you think of it that way, then it... Have you ever slowed the world down here we are and this is right as you guys get to the life well he just says here we are and he spins in a circle like a pirouette and he just plops in a perfect meditation stand and he is breathing so shallow you can't even see it so you would know that your business here is like to sit and meditate with him in the life well okay I sit and meditate okay make a religion check <clears throat> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, eleven. Okay. So not as bad as it could be. Um, you're still you're still pretty new to this whole religion thing and like meditating and stuff like that. So you're able for you know for a little bit more than ten minutes. We'll say eleven. Uh, you know for 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 no real reason. For about 11 minutes, you're able to sit there and uh, meditate. But um, eventually, like I said, this is all relatively new to you. So, so eventually, like your eyes, you have trouble keeping them closed. And, you know, you you find yourself just sitting there, eyes open, watching Athos, who is still just like, he's in such a deep trance that he wouldn't know it if a tree slammed into him. Uh, so when you lose your concentration, you see a flock of seagulls poking around on the beach, and amid them there stands a lone raven. Uh, just in time for you to see him, he flies away out actually to sea, which strikes you as interesting for a raven. Um, and then your attention turns to a small white sand crab perched on top of a log, uh, kind of like a, a washed up piece of driftwood. Um, as if the crab sees you looking at it, it scuttles to the bottom of the log to run away. About that time, whoosh, and the log just burst into flames in front of your eyes. You look as the crab, like, still kind of, it's alive, but it's, like, kind of smoking. It's just like, ha, 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 and it's, like, running across the sand, and it runs into the water, and you can kind of hear a, and see, like, a little wisp of smoke run up as the crab runs into the water. Um, so the log goes up in flames very, very quickly and it disintegrates in less than a minute into a pile of ash. What would you like to do? The raven was sitting on the log? The raven was near the log. It was just kind of, it was uh, like kind of standing near the, um, near the shoreline. Okay, so since my necklace is getting a little low on stuff, <laughs> I'm going to go um, collect some of the ash and okay. put it in my vial. Okay. What is your passive perception? 17. 17. So that's pretty good. Uh, you hear a rustling behind you, and which strikes you as odd because Ethis was very, very deep in, um, very, very deep in meditation. So... Out of the corner of your eye, as you scoop the ash into the vial, you look up just in time to see what looks to be a puff of purple and gray smoke coming out of the life wall. Soon it forms into a roughly humanoid torso with a head, but a completely featureless face. Uh, roughly where an arm is supposed to be on this figure, a, tindle, a tendril of smoke reaches outward and coils tightly around Ethis's head and throat. You see his body go limp instantly, before the figure begins to move toward the sea, dragging the unmoving body of Ethis behind it. Um, I'm gonna... Uh, 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 we'll come uh, back to you in a moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Moonshade Isles rose to prominence. Okay. Uh, about two... <laughs> 
the Moonshot Isles rose to prominence about two centuries ago, then a queendom under the rule of the first in the Valrite dynasty. Uh, Queen Betris Valrite was so thirsty for knowledge that she began a practice of requiring all inbound ships to be searched for books, which may contain knowledge undiscovered by the scholars in her own queendom, uh, which she then had copied and returned to their owners. Uh, that desire for knowledge to better society became an integral part of the culture here on the Moonshay Isles, and particularly in Evercrest, the home to the most revered library in all of Faerun. Uh, scholars have been known to fall to their knees weeping in the doorway of the grand Evercrestian library upon seeing its massive shelves stocked end to end with scrolls and, and books uh, of you know knowledge of history, religion, arcana, all that's known to the realm. It was actually built, this whole library was actually built around one of Evercrest's many life wells as a means of remaining humble to nature and pursuit of knowledge. Uh, the staircases are made from fine marble, the shelves of mahogany, and there's a gorgeous mural of Queen Valrite herself with a book and a glass of wine uh, towering over the room. There are people studying in this library and they're whispering to each other in hushed, excited tones as they, you know, smile and roll open scrolls of precious par parchment. So, Dorf, <laughs> you have found yourself here, swallowed by this massive, swanky library in a land previously unexplored to, uh, by you in pursuit of knowledge. Uh, what might someone standing in this library see when they look at you, and what would you like to do? You look and you see a tall, slender elf. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at dwarf, you see a short, statured dwarf. He has a red beard with braids in it, red hair, beautiful bushy red eyebrows, and he stands about four foot five with some chain mail on. <laughs> <laughs> so more or less precisely what we see before us right now in, in real life. You could just open your eyes and look at this. Yeah, but of course. Uh, so what would you like to be doing in this library? I think I'd uh, like to try to find some books uh, on a certain kind of magic. Okay. Um, Possibly of the uh, necromancy kind of magic. Okay. Oh. Okay, are you just looking for this by yourself? Are you asking for help? Is there any sort of, uh, like, <clears throat> indicators anywhere of, of the sectional kind of things in the yeah, library? Yeah, yeah. Make, uh, make an investigation check. Sure. That's my exact dice. That's awesome. I have I have that too. So what was that? I couldn't see it. 18. 18. That is very, very good. So uh, very incredibly quickly, you are able to uh, see that you need to be going to the north wing. Actually, there's a there's a hub um, and the scrolls on necromancy and things like that are on the uh, the north wing to this hub uh, just beside the life well. And um, so as you as you head that way, you see this life well. And Dorf, you've seen a couple of life wells since you've been here, but this one is just a little bit different. There's basically a bricked off section of this library that's just kind of like a miniature indoor lawn. Uh, it's got exposed ground, mostly sand, with a little grass uh, sprouting up with help from massive skylights in the ceiling. Uh, people are actually allowed onto this lawn. So people are sitting in the sand and reading. Uh, in the middle of it, like I said, is this life well. Uh, so you are looking with with that investigation check i'd say you're able to find probably a dozen scrolls probably 10 or 12 scrolls on uh necromancy they're you know, very dense document uh but you're able to find probably about a dozen scrolls on necromancy within you know within just a couple of minutes so at cool. this point would you would you like to like find somewhere to sit and start reading them or what what would you like to be doing after that grab as many as i can hold and uh i take a glance over at the life well with all the people sitting around it and say hey, bunch of hippies and then <laughs> i walk over to a table and start pouring over these documents okay um make an intelligent check ah crap Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So you are, you're having trouble finding exactly what it is you're looking for. It's, it's pretty fascinating, 
but you're you're having trouble finding exactly what it is you're looking for. Um, and I would say that you are. What is your passive perception? Ten. Ten. Wait, wait, okay. wait hold on. I'm looking for it. Oh, there it is. Yes, it is 10. It is 10? Okay. <laughs> um, you just barely notice inside your pocket. Uh, you just barely notice, like, something kind of moving around in there. You're you're very, you know, very entranced to what it is you're doing, but you can feel something wiggling around. I think I, I, think I know what that is. Yeah. All right. Um, Reach into my pocket and pull it out and set it on the table. <clears throat> My little hedgehog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I set the hedgehog on the table and I kind of start, like, you know, slowly caressing the top, his, his spikes on the top of his head. And I say, it's all right, pick it. I'm looking, I'm looking. Just chill out, would you? And then I just let he's him not, he's walk not around a bit. All yeah, right, yeah. all right, calm your quills. And um, he, he actually, like, and he actually hops off the table and runs over onto the lawn, and he starts sniffing around the life well. Ah, great. What are you doing over that? Wait for me, you stupid little spiky boy. Leave everything that I've got on the table and just walk after him. Okay. Right as you get to the life well, a, a purple and green wispy figure begins to rise from the inside. Um... It's a figure, much like Kes just saw, a humanoid with, like, you know, uh, smoky wisps and a f completely featureless face. Um, the hedgehog jumps away, like, just so, so terribly frightened. And he, like, jumps by, by this time you're on the lawn with him, and he basically jumps right back in your pocket. Um, people, as they begin to notice this, they begin to scream, and the figure floats through the library and it lurches toward a desk and it grabs a librarian and just wraps a tendril around her head and the body just goes completely limp and the figure drags the librarian out into the street. Why does this always happen when I am around? I'm just so unlucky. It's wispy things and tendrils and ugh. I'm gonna pull, like grab, grab a hold of one of my war hammers and just start walking in that direction. Okay, so you're gonna... Going on. Okay, okay. At this point, uh, I would like to point out that people are screaming and like cowering, and you're just like, "Ah, my luck!" In the pretty in much the middle yeah. of this library. <laughs> pretty much, that's me. I'm taking caution not to be like noticed. However, you okay. know, I'm not being like, "Hey, look at me, a stupid thing!" You know, I'm just okay. walking over there to see what's up. But I want to have one of my warhammers out, so and just in case they get the drop on me. Okay, all right, that's fine. easily enough. Nobody's really paying attention to you. So. Cool. You don't, you no don't, one don't ever does. or anything like that. Um, you're you're kind of below everybody's frame of sight. So, all righty. Everest. It's a height joke. <laughs> all right. Moving along. Evercrest might be a thriving capital city, but it has its darkened alleyways just like anywhere else. Uh, on a muddy back street, we see a huge rat, probably a foot long from nose to tail, uh, sloshing through a puddle left by the morning rain. The rat sees the bones of a chicken with a bit of meat still around the edges. Uh, it scampers up to it and grabs the rib cage, and the rat just starts gnawing on the bone. A second later, and an arrow pierces through the rat's skull and pins him to the building that he was standing in front of. As the body of the rat swings to and fro, left over from the velocity of the arrow, it, it becomes uh, shrouded in this shadow-like mist until it disappears completely. And... Just like the rat disappeared with like a like a like a mist, the arrow does as well. And after a moment, it doesn't appear as if anything was there besides maybe a, a blood stain from the rat. But about forty feet away, someone lowers a longbow. So Q, what might someone who has just walked into this alleyway see when they look at you? Nothing too pleasing. So Q um, is. All, he's very tall. He stands about two foot four inches. Um, <laughs> he is... Shorter than the dwarf. Yes. Two, about half the size of the dwarf. 
Um, he is skate co covered in red scales, as you do. Very attractive for his type. Um, you know, like a bright crimson kind of, but but a little burnt red. Um, he's wearing leathered, uh, leather covered scale mail armor with uh, with uh, uh, like a, a fur that is not quite clean, sort of bloody uh, around his neck. Um, and then, you know, maybe like maybe probably the most important feature is the giant skull on his head um, that he wears as a helmet. And uh, he's lowering the uh, blight bow, the, the, the bone covered bow um, and probably looks around and, you know, he's, he's pretty happy with this kill. OK, um, a voice like a gust of wind fills your head. Truly really think. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hmm? Okay, I, I didn't know. Like, like technically yeah. speaking, I didn't know if you could hear me. So, pretend I didn't say that. We're gonna get. We're gonna immerse right back into it. You <laughs> foolish child. Do you what? truly think becoming a terror to sewer rats will ever be enough to solve our problem? <laughs> I need you to do great things. If you truly love. Me. I have to eat. <laughs> I don't know what to do, mother. The voice is gone. What would you like uh, to do? Well, I, 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 I'm going to put the rat down. And then I'm going to pick the rat back up and take a big ass bite. Okay. Uh huh. And then I'm going to um, skitter, kind of kind of crawl down, down the road and, 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 kind of look questioningly um it's dark it's not dark out though okay no that no 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 it's not it's it's yeah, like so. it's like mid-afternoon okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna come in kind of come toward the corner of the back street and just kind of cock my head side to side and see what i see okay there is um you see easily enough there is um a little girl like walking around by herself just with a like with a paddle ball i guess just because that's funny to me. Because she's just walking around like, la, 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 with a paddle ball. And she sees you just, hang on, hang on, just like chowing down on a rat. Yeah, it's and still she, hanging out of the mouth, yeah. Yeah, it, you said the tail's hanging out of his mouth? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she drops the paddle ball and steps back and just bolts and runs away. But other than her, you don't see anybody else. I would like to go get the paddle ball. Okay. Just real, real. I'm gonna put my hood up. And okay. I'm gonna run over and just grab the paddle ball. I assume it's a it's a sign. Okay. Do you try to use it? Oh hell no! I don't know what this contraption does. I put it in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> okay. So add a paddle ball to your inventory. Oh I yes. Suppose. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been wanting one of these. <laughs> uh, what is your passive perception? You. Uh, it is at 10. 10. Okay. You do not notice until it's right up on you, but there is a wispy figure, purple and green, just barreling towards you. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, shit. Okay. Ooh. Um, Saving throw, you said? Mm-hmm. That's a big, solid Cinco. Cinco? Five. Okay. Um, yeah, so how am I going to do this? <laughs> Um, How do you want to do this? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> fun, fun playing with you, Goon. Yep. <laughs> See you guys. So, um, as it as it barrels toward you, you're at this point. You're like kind of standing just in the shadow. Like probably you're standing just in the shadow, and like you can see the busy street in front of you. And um, it it reaches out a tendril and it grabs you and it wraps around your neck. And for a minute. Everything goes cold. But then it's you feel it dragging you and you feel something say like, oh, no, that'll never do. And it just drops you. So at this point, you're lying face down in a mud puddle. Um, you just like your breath just rushes back to you and you look up and see the figure wrap a tendril around the head of uh, a merchant standing on the street. And it just 
clenches it, the body goes limp, and he starts dragging it. And with that, uh, make a make a perception check. That's a natural 20. Okay, with a natural 20, Ooh. first one, first <laughs> one of the campaign. Huzzah, huzzah. huzzah so huzzah. with a natural 20, you are able to see um, actually three more of these things. And they are, they all have someone in their grasp and they're all heading toward the beach in the same direction. M M Mother, what are you, what, what are you doing? And we're going to come back to there in a second. So, being a seaside port town, about half of the population of Evercrest is uh, in a state of flux. Fishermen who sail in and then back out to bring their catch to market. Um, and the word market is kind of a loose term. Pretty much anywhere else there's, uh, or pre pretty much anywhere, there's uh, a dock next to water. Merchants will be found and heard, like, barking prices to passersby, as well as, like, arguing and fighting with competitors over who has the right to, sh uh, to set up shop, you know, right in that particular spot. So, Augustus, you have found yourself wandering down one of these docks. There's a smell of fish uh, cooking to lure in some customers. Uh, there's maybe some fish festering in the afternoon humidity. Uh, what might someone who is standing on this dock see when they look at you, and what would you like to be doing? Hmm. So, Augustus is a turtle meaning that he's kind of hard to miss in a crowd, despite only being about chest height on your average human. Um, he's a wider figure, like brawny and weathered with this, uh, like a greenish leathery skin and these big gray bushy eyebrows. Um, hmm. His, um, what are you doing right now? It's it like his turtleneck is stretching out of this like thick shell that encompasses most of his body, um, which is going to be adorned with all these straps and ropes, keeping various books and scrolls and gems bound to him. And uh, he's leaning on a staff with a lantern hanging off of the top of it as he's uh, talking to a fish merchant at the moment. Okay. Just looking for some food for the day. Looking for some food for the day. Okay. Um, so easily enough talking to a fish merchant you're able to find probably for i'd say two silver you're able to find enough enough fish raw uh for the day for you to have nice score all right okay <laughs> and uh if you don't care could you make a perception check for me please yes i will do that let's see perception would be do 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 that would be a 10. a 10 okay um, you are able to see a, there's, uh, you're able to notice out of the corner of your eye a couple of things. There's, um, a Dwarven man on a one-person sailboat, and he's just, like, standing beneath it, just kind of, like, crushed. And there, you see a huge rip in the sail. Um, and you see him just, like, standing there being like, what the hell am I gonna do about this? I'm and, just devastated. Yeah. And you can also see there is a, a merchant, not the one you were just speaking to, but uh, a couple of stalls down from him, and he's being accosted by some shadier types and uh, in hushed voices. With that perception, I'd say you probably are not able to tell what they're really talking about. I gotcha. Hmm. I'm going to slowly meander my way towards the man who's getting accosted by the shadier folks. Not getting involved yet, but just trying to eavesdrop on what they might be talking about to see if there's anything that I might be able to do to secretly help. Okay. Make a, if you're trying to sneak, make a stealth check for me. Oh, I suck at stealth. All right. Let, I'm just a big turtle boy. Uh, 13 actually. Okay. 13. Okay. Yeah. You're, they see you, but they don't think you're able to kind of hide that you're able to like stand in a stall next to the one that they're in. And it looks like you're genuinely interested in shopping at this other place, but you kind of mm -hmm. hear, um, you you kind of hear these whispered voice like, you were supposed to give me payment a week ago. Now, I'm going to get angry, and my employer is going to get very angry if there's not payment very, very soon. And the fish merchant goes, I'm sorry, they're just not biting. I'm going to do what I can, but, I, you know, I, I, I can only, I've, I've given you all I've got. I'm sorry, please just give me a bit more time. Um, hmm. I'm not going to get involved uh, 
right away. I think I'm going to continue listening to the conversation that's happening and see if they uh, step away from the merchant and give them space um, or what, like, but um, like, essentially I'm waiting for them to like, okay, you know, go get your money and we'll be back and then they're going to leave. Uh, and I'm just kind of hanging out to see if that's the case right now. Okay. You see the person, the shady figure who uh, has been accosting this fisherman. You see him not move toward him, but he draws a knife. He draws like a, like a dagger and he just kind of twirls it in his hands. And he says, 24 hours. And then he backs away, maintaining eye contact. How close uh, am, I, am I to him? You are probably 10 feet. And he's, like I said, he's just twirling this dagger in his hand and he's backing away, you know, death vision on this fish market. Is he backing away towards me or just kind of like he's backing away like you. into yeah. the crowd? You're, you're standing right next to the stall that, that he's been that he's been in. Okay. Um, as soon as those guys are kind of out of sight, I'm going to go and talk to that merchant. Okay. Uh, hello there. I was wondering what you were selling today. Uh, no, not, not very much, I'm afraid. Um, I, I've just got, I've got a few, you know, very... And he, you just see him, like, tears are welling in his eyes. And he's just like, I'll give you everything I've got for, for you know, five gold. Um, Please. well, I'm not sure if I can carry everything that you've got, but I'm sure I can part way with at least... Mm, and I start digging through a pouch uh, attached to the side of my shell, and I pull out ten gold pieces, and I hand it over to the man. How about... How about you give me nothing but some peace of mind and have a nice rest of your day? And I slowly nod and just take my leave. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. And uh, you see this man take off toward the man who was just accosting him. And you're just kind of, you're feeling proud. You're feeling, you know, you're feeling good. You're feeling like you helped somebody today. And uh, you see this uh, this fish merchant. He's just waving his arms. Come back. Come back. Come here. Come here. And um, right as he gets to the man, you, Augustus, uh, you feel the heat of the sun on your neck basically vanish. The sky has grayed. Oh, no. And I was like, hell yeah, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's great. No, okay. Uh, the sky is grayed and the wind has picked up like substantially, almost instantly. You hear screams and you turn around to see smoky, faceless figures uh, hovering and hurtling down the dock. People are actually at this point, like by the time it gets to you, you see like people basically like synchronized swimming, just jumping off of the dock and into the water. Um, and when it gets about 20 yards to you where the, the fish merchant, he's actually one of the people who's just jumped off into the water. Um, the figure actually grabs the shady man who is accosting him and just wraps his, wraps his tendril, just like he has everywhere else around his head, just like a boa constrictor and just clenched. And the body goes numb or the, not numb, but the body goes limp. Um, and you watch as the figure glides, and it's just hovering off the water. But uh, it glides and then ducks right as it gets to the end of the dock. And then after a moment, you can see it gliding across the water off toward the horizon. And make uh, make another perception check for me, please. Whew. All right. That is going to be a dirty 20. That is a filthy 20. Okay, so you see... 20. Yeah, you see, like... At this point, you can see six or seven of these figures traveling out over the water, like kind of staggered, and they're all carrying bodies behind them that are just like their feet are in breaking the surface of the water. And it looks like like a grotesque, horrifying jet ski, more or less like there's uh, water just like, you know, there's a wake behind them. It's the, the worst jet ski you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> OK. Um, And we're going to go ahead and move on from you at this point, but just be thinking about what you're doing standing here on this dock as all of this okay. has happened. Uh, there are certain things, certain visuals that one grows used to in Evercrest. Ships larger than life carrying passengers from strange faraway lands or unloading precious objects even stranger. Uh, the people who spend their time on the docks of Evercrest do so largely because they like to live in a way that forces them to expect the unexpected. Uh, Steve-O, make a strength check for me, please, with your character. Oh, cool. Right off the bat. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, what am I rolling for a strength check? Uh-huh. 
Remind it's, me. Uh, it's a uh, D20 and add your strength modifier. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I played D&D &D before. <laughs> okay. Uh, 19. 19. Okay. You are not breaking a sweat, but we'll get to that in a second. Despite the fact that these people live to expect the unexpected, they all more or less stop what they're doing and stare at a crappy little canoe with a single person aboard, paddling parallel to the shore toward the docks and just bouncing side to side off the waves. The canoe is filled to the brim with bloody dead harpies, uh, nude humanoid figures with claws and wings and grayish skin. Uh, the operator of this canoe is covered head to toe in blood and gore. Um, and again, you are paddling against, uh, like, alongside the waves, not even breaking a sweat. And as the boat fo floats closer to the dock, Pierce, please describe what someone standing on the dock might see uh, as they look underneath and see the horror that you're covered in. So if you can look past the horror, uh, you'll see a different horror of a person, uh, I would say roughly uh, normal human stature with a uh, uh, lanky, but not uh, not muscleless body. When some might say Wyetti. Uh, I have, uh, or Pierce has blue eyes, a mask across his face with a splotch on it that might be blood, it might be paint, and a long leather duster and a tri-corner hat as if to say, uh, the British uh, Dunn came. So, uh, <laughs> the hair that you can make out from underneath the hat is blue because all the cool kids have blue hair. It's here. And, uh, as you said, covered in filth and doesn't look like he minds it. Okay. Um, so, as you're sitting there, uh, just kind of like beneath the dock as the uh, as the weight kind of bounces up and down on you. There's a tiefling man who you know is Pim, and uh, he's actually the person who hired you to take care of the harpies in the first place. Um, because these harpies had, you would know, had taken out a ship just north of you. And he stares at you from the dock above with his arms just crossed. When I said for you to bring me proof that they had been taken care of, this is not what I had in mind. Well then, you need to be more specific. I start pulling bodies off the boat, <laughs> laying them at his feet. Uh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop what you're doing. I will dispose of the bodies, but it's going to be a bit off the top. What and, kind of bit off the top? And he gives you, let's see, how much did I say he gave you? Um, he gives you 25 gold, and you remember distinctly he was going to give you 40 gold. Okay. So, uh, I'm no mathematician, Pim, but the percentage off the top is, it's going uh... to be a bit off the top for disposal. This is no, in no small inconvenience to me. Well, it was no small inconvenience to me to have to go kill these effing things. So, why don't I help you dispose of them, and you give me the full cut? Make a persuasion check. Okay. Da, 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 da. 19. 19. Okay. Um, Pim just sort of... Hey, I haven't got time for this. I will get someone else to do it. And he just, uh, he gives you the other 15 gold that you rode. And he just That's starts... Right. I'm taking the canoe. You would know that it wasn't your canoe to begin with. Um... But he says, I'm taking the canoe. And he just hops down and he starts unloading these dead harpies. And after a moment, you're just kind of sitting there watching him. And he just kind of like kicks them off into the water. <laughs> and this is not deep water. <laughs> um, so what, are, what would you like to do now? All right, Pim, enjoy uh, the canoe. Enjoy the corpses. I'm going to have a drink. And I walk myself towards town. Okay. Just still covered in blood? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you are walking, you see, um, you pass by, like, people are, people are talking, and you pass by a couple of guards, and it, at first, they pay you no mind. Oh, yeah, they're going to come after you. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're, you're just walking, I imagine, you're just like, just kind of whistling, covered in blood and entrails, and you hear, you, stop! 
and you look back and there are two guards barreling your way. Oh, fun. So I'm going to naturally run. Okay. Um, okay. Make a, make a strength check. Strength check. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. We have... 13. 13, okay. Um, you're able to run before... You're pretty tired at this point, but before you start to get winded, you're able to run for about two or three minutes, and there are pretty good ways behind you, and you kind of duck into an alleyway. Um, and you look behind, and they're no longer chasing you, but you hear screams, and you duck your head out the alleyway, and you see several ghosty, wispy figures with bodies being dragged out over the water. And at that point, we're going to take a break because we have met all of the characters. Oh, a break, eh? Oh, ho, ho, ho! Oh, okay. Woo! Wait, whoa, oh. What oh, Zach break had to, like, he had to pee, obviously. <laughs> back. We're back? Yeah. You guys excited? You happy the people have met your characters now? That's super fun. Did my character offend you, Zach? Because you ran from me. No, man. <laughs> okay, that was not... I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a full confession. That was not where I was planning on cutting for a break. I, uh -huh. I was on the treadmill for a little while uh -huh. before the we started. Mm -hmm. I drank a bunch of water because I wasn't uh -huh. thinking because I'm a stupid person. No, so, because you're a good person who stays hydrated, yes. He was just standing on the treadmill. It wasn't on. <laughs> he was standing on. <laughs> just choking water. I didn't have to hydrate. Like Those so things was turn just, on. I was just like, "This is this is gonna this is gonna inconvenience me later," and I have Stockholm syndrome. So, blah. oh my god. So, um, well, now we're to the next to our actual scene, our actual RP scene. Uh, so I can't see it. Yeah, is that oh, can't see it, but, but I've seen it. So stats will will change, and we'll have a. You'll be able to see all of the beautiful artwork uh, by Aurelia. Um, make sure you guys like follow her, commission her for your art. Exclamation point character art. I got it. Yeah. She's actually in chat. So. Oh, Aurelia's in chat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Round of applause yeah. for Aurelia. <laughs> they will only, only be able to hear us, but. She did an amazing. Amazing not the people job. watching. Uh, we could have paid two hundred and fifty dollars an image and not gotten art as good as we did. So Great. yeah, she killed it. Anyway, let's play D and D. <laughs> so, Kess, immediately after seeing what you just saw, the ocean becomes rowdier and lightning is visible in the sky, but it's silent over the sound of the waves. Kess is probably thirty yards away from you, being dragged I'm toward the water. I'm kidding. What's the, what was the at this, at this, at this. Yeah, the end of the S, you and I'm what? still like. I should take notes. Yeah, you know what? I should too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. But at this, at this, the fast talking uh, druid friend that you have made is being his unconscious, most likely uh, very limp body is being dragged toward the water, and there's just like two lines in the sand where his feet are being dragged. At this point, the the great the figure, the faceless figure, is kind of hovering just at the at the shoreline. So, what would you like to be doing? Gosh. Okay. I want to cast Thorn Whip on. <laughs> Look at Goon. Goon is like, yeah! Um, thorn whip on uh, the the being and, and, or, and at least see if I can get Ethis back. Okay. And uh, what... Can you read the description of that spell to me, please? Yeah! Uh, okay, well, I have to... I have to, I have to roll. I've, I've got it. Uh, you create long... <laughs> Create a long vine like whip covered in thorns that lashes out and commanded a creature. Melee spell creature hits. Okay. Okay. So yeah, roll roll to attack. Oh, it's not good. What if it's not good? Oh wait, it's five it's seventeen. Um Okay. Okay. 
Um, <coughs> with that, you um. are able to wrap the thorn whip around Ethis's foot. Um, you saw that when it kind of went through, like when it hit the figure, it just kind of floated right through him, and then the thorn whip wrapped around Ethis's leg. Okay, okay. So that so you have will, a hold of Ethis. Ethis will take damage for that. Okay. <laughs> um, hang on. Let me roll that damage. Uh, but he will be pulled 10 feet closer to me. He will take three. Ooh, nope. Ooh, nine points of piercing damage. Bless. Okay. Okay. So his leg, um, his leg is pierced in several different places, and it yeah. just deep crimson blood starts uh, starts running out and just draining into the sand. And so now, instead of just the feet marks behind him, there's it's like streaked with red blood. Um, I know you said that he's pulled ten feet closer to you, but you're actually pulled ten feet closer to him. Uh, this figure is dragging you behind it. Okay, I want to. The the figure like it is not letting go. Oh heck! Uh, I oh, I have all of my utility spells prepared. I didn't know we were gonna do stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought this was gonna be RP. Um, okay. Uh, oh, gosh, I want to charm per cast charm person. Okay. On, on the being and hang on my internet. Hang on. Yeah, I think he has to make a save. Oh my god. Charm, per charm person on the being, and I want to, s to get try to get him to let Ethis down. Um, He has to make a save of uh, 15. Wisdom. He saves. Wisdom? I'm gonna do it again. Okay. We gotta okay. do it again. <laughs> okay. Um Okay. So the figure is being dragged. So what what does it look like when you cast on person and it fails and then it happens again? Like what, what what does that look like? I mean he would know that he was going to be charmed, but then he wouldn't be able to resist it again. Okay. So he um <laughs> I, I say he, this this figure is like floating out towards the water and it's in the sand. And so you cast Charm Person on it and he, he, it doesn't seem to notice or even care. Uh, then you cast it a second time and it stops and it floats and it hovers over the shore. But Ethis is still clenched tight in his fist and is in the coil. I'm just going to be like, so... Don't worry, buddy. I'm gonna take him, and I'm just gonna take it. I'm trying to take it this from him. Okay. Okay. So, um, but he's charmed you see... by me. Okay. Ethis drops um, face down into the water. Okay. And the figure kind of ho hovers there for just a moment, and after a second, it makes a beeline back toward the shore. And you watch as it travels 100, 200, 300 yards. And at this point, you see six, seven figures coming at you uh, of the exact same nature. And they all, all of these people have, um, or all of these figures have unconscious bodies just dragging behind them. And then you look, uh, make a... First, well, I, I'm going to make sure Ethis is not drowning. <laughs> um... Ethis, you make a medicine check. I'm gonna, okay. Natural 20. Natural 20, okay. Um, Ethis is not awake. He's very, very unconscious. He is pretty severely injured on his leg, but he's okay-ish, right? Like, he's he's stable, but he is unconscious. But he's not making uh, death saves? No. Can I slap him and wake him up? You can try. <laughs> okay, roll to attack. Realism. No, I'm not gonna slap it yeah. that way. No, yeah. 
I mean, like, I, like, whoa. No, I'm kidding. Don't roll to attack. Fine. Um, it was a six anyways. Okay. Um, you hit. I'm kidding. Um, his armor class is three. So. <laughs> Bless. Poor Ethis. Not really. Okay, so. Um, yeah. Uh, Ethis is stable at your feet. Bleeding pretty profusely from his leg, but stable. Okay. And you see these six, seven, eight figures barreling uh, toward you. They all have unconscious, uh, unconscious people pulling behind them. Okay. There's nothing. I, I, I feel very hopeless or helpless right now. Um. After a moment, you see the figure that you just charmed um, coming back with another person with another unconscious body. And try, like you, you, you can into it. Like they all look the same, but you can into it that it's kind of the same. Um, that it's the same thing because it's lagging a little bit behind Elder, and they're just coasting out toward the sea. Okay, I'm gonna um, healing word at this though. Okay, so roll that healing or however that works. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a quick moment to let you guys know that we have a huge storm hitting us right now. So if we disappear, our power probably went out. Okay. Okay. Just to know. <laughs> Good luck. Not having um, fun. Uh, six points of healing. Okay. So yeah, pretty much all the all the damage. Um, Cat, uh, Ethis is Ethis is is good, but he's still unconscious. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, the sound of the surf has reduced, and the water doesn't seem at this point like the water doesn't seem to be lapping up like it was on the shoreline. Rather, it's receding. Uh, you have the sinking thought that it kind of looks like the water is draining. These small, like, uh, ground-dwelling creatures are, like, climbing from the holes in the sand, like they like they do on the beach, you know? Um, Q, after what just happened to you, after what you saw, what are you doing? Okay, and so it's, it's not dragging me away. I won't no. do. It's dragging other people away? Yeah, it, it went for a like it, it dra I don't know if you saw you probably with your with the check that you made, you probably didn't see which figure that he got. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, they're they're dragging other people away. But they let you go for some reason. Okay. If I look around like what's around me? What am I looking at? Uh you're just kind of on a on a street at this point. You are yeah. you you know uh how long have you been in Evercrest at this point? couple weeks not long maybe, so maybe you, you would know where the beach is you know that you're yeah. not very far away from the beach and you know that like you can see all these figures heading toward the beach uh -huh. um and you know uh you like you know that people are kind of screaming and like running in buildings and hiding uh -huh. and that's that's sort of the scene before you uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. is there a trash can um or something to hide behind there, there is um, kind of a, a small, okay. like a small kiosk where it looks like maybe someone was selling, uh, selling fruit. Oh, oh, like a little, little podium. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna jump behind it. Okay. 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 Um, and at that point, you hear the voice again, and it's not abnormal to hear the voice, uh, but twice in a day is certainly kind of rare. Uh -huh. uh, and it says, "Do you feel that? It's no, no. delicious. Within chaos are opportunities to do powerful things, and opportunity is not a limit. Make me proud, one. Uh, uh, is this what you want? Is this what you want? And I'd hop up on top of the kiosk, and I, th and I summon." my boomerang <laughs> okay <laughs> which is a giant curved spinal cord looking bone cool and i'm gonna throw it at the nearest tentacle the the nearest tentacle swirly the nearest te okay at at this point they're like 50 yards away from you you can still oh. see them and people are running oh, yards yeah shit okay i don't do that then well, I start running towards them. Oh no! You know what? Fine. Then I will just turn the t the tentacle boomerang into a 
a, a, a string appears onto the tentacle boomerang, and then I will hike it back. Okay. Is that bow? And then two spectral arrow arrows appear, and I shoot it with uh, my range of 600 feet, which is like 200 yards. Okay. Um, roll, roll the hit. You're damn right. But are, are we in sunlight? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So roll the hit with disadvantage. Because you, you damn right. are not a sunny boy. Disadvantage, though, that is a 17 to hit. 17 to hit, okay. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm aiming at the closest spectral nonsense. You, like I said, the closest one is about 50 yards away, so it's about 150 feet. Uh-huh, which and is... it, your your vision is not great, um, so you can't really tell if you hit the thing or not. Okay. Um, you you feel you feel pretty good that you know maybe it connected with something, but you can't really tell. It doesn't look like anything fell to the ground. Okay, I'm gonna scream. Is this what you want? Is this it? You're and then I'm going to jump behind shit. the kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving along. Dorf, after what you just saw, what are you doing? So I, I saw everything that just happened to Goon? Uh, no, no, no. What? No, not what happened. What happened? You, after, after what you saw with the librarian being dragged out into the street, you said you were walking toward the street with your mace or your uh, warhammer. Yeah, I'm kind of assessing the situation, um, see what's going on. If I'm going to need to fight my way out, or if I could get out of here without, you know, drawing any attention. Okay. Uh, at this point, everyone is leaving you more or less alone. They're not super, super worried about you. By the time you get out into the street, I'd say you, just like everybody else, you're able to see probably seven, eight, nine, ten of these figures. But at this point, they all have people wrapped in their uh, in their grasps, and they're all floating away toward the beach. Towards the beach? Yeah. Hmm. Wait, which is, you know, probably half a mile away from you. To pursue or not to pursue? Um... I can't, my curiosity of what the heck this is going on is too high, so I'm going to start to cautiously head in that direction to where these things are going. Okay. Follow behind. Alrighty. So, yeah, you're, they're much faster than you, but okay. you're able to kind of, you're able to kind of keep an eye on them, and eventually you make your way to the beach, and there you actually see uh, an unconscious druid and... A uh, another druid standing above him with this thorny whip in her hand, and he's like bleeding out of his leg and stuff. But you also see these figures traveling out. At this point, they are very far away on the horizon, um, and you see the 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 sky's gray, and you see the water getting really really rough, and you see like this this sort of wave form in like a cyclone and it juts out of the water but it stands still Augustus what are you doing I am um, was it just the one spirit that carried the one man off for me still or have more appeared that, that you saw that's all you that's that's all you saw originally but um, make a make a perception check boo, boo, boo. Net ding, 20 ding, ding, ding. 21 really? nice okay so yeah you can mm -hmm. see you can see, you you count fourteen figures that have uh, taken people, and they're just like, uh, they're out on the horizon. And you also see the figure that I just described, a dwarf. This uh, this sort of cylinder uh, of water just come up out of the ocean. You don't see any more. There are no more of the figures near you. It seems like they're all out of the water. Um, uh, I guess it's kind of hunkers over a little bit and kind of shimmies over towards the dock um, line. Not going out like onto the dock proper, but just to where the edge of the uh, the land is basically. And uh, offers to try and help some people who jumped into the water back up onto the land. Okay, uh, make, a, make a strength check. Uh, sure thing, strength check. No bonus. Oh, just a just a terrible one. Just a big thick old oh, oh, you fall in single the water line on that one. You, you natural, fall in the water. A natural twenty and then a natural one. Uh yeah, that's oh, my life. That's oh, how I like to live it. 
That's that's, that's some okay. Highs. I'm good. Some highs and dice. some low lows. I'm good in so, the water. It's fine. So yeah, you you kind of you kind of reach over and you're trying to help. Um, you're trying to help somebody that you were you know you saw like we'll say it's a kid. You're trying to help a kid back up onto the dock, but the dock is just slippery at this point. Um, it's just, a heavy kid. He pull, I weigh like 500 pounds. He pulls me in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the kid is just is just, oh, uh, just deceptively heavy, and he just ah, and he just yanks and pulls you into the water. Uh, who'd we lose? Oh, Jen. Oh no! Jen. Looks like Eric is frozen as well. Oh no! Yep. Oh, sad. Hang on. Hi, everyone. This is what our screen looks like when someone disconnects. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh my goodness, the DM. Yes. I'm okay. out. We're doing this. Okay. Roll initiative, guys. Oh god! Actually. Oh, <laughs> oh no! I send you oh. my. Should I send you my notes or what? Yeah, it looks like it looks like Jen and Eric have lost power. Okay, let's so you're, you're playing Q. Are we good with another five or so minute break? See if they get it yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Back. Oh, the transfer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I found my square they- window. I'm right down here. Hello. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, where is my? Someone. Let's go oh here. yeah, we got a clip of me being the DM. I love that. Okay. We're gonna break for a minute, guys. <laughs> we're we're sorry. Maybe they'll have their internet back soon.